United for Social Change presents The Marshmallow Test. Picture yourself in a mall staring at a very expensive product that you really, really want. Maybe a piece of clothing from a high-end fashion designer or a newly released gaming system. You know that if you just wait a couple of months, the hype around this item that you really want will die down and the price will drop significantly. Do you go with your immediate urge to buy the item right now or do you listen to the reasonable part of your brain and wait? Everyone has a hot system of thinking and a cool system of thinking. The hot system makes choices based on your emotions, and these are usually quick, impulsive decisions that only satisfy your short-term desires. Meanwhile, the cool system makes choices based on logic, considering all the possible consequences of your actions and making decisions that will benefit you in the long run. Everyday tests of self-control, like the temptation of an expensive product you want to buy at the mall, will reveal whether a person relies more on their hot system of thinking or their cool one. If you would rather buy the product immediately at a higher price, you lean more towards the hot system. And if you'd wait to buy the product a few months later at a lower price, you lean more towards the cool system. The marshmallow test was a study conducted by psychologist Walter Mischel in the 1960s and 1970s to explore self-control in a group of children and see whether these children tended towards a hot or cool system of thinking. The marshmallow test began with Mischel and his team of researchers placing a plate of treats, usually marshmallows, on a table in an otherwise empty room. Children between the ages of 3 and 5 were led into this room one by one to be tested individually. Each child was told that the researchers would leave for a few minutes, and if the child could resist eating any of the treats until the researchers returned, they could have two marshmallows. If the child couldn't resist the treats, they were instructed to ring a bell that would bring the researcher back to the room early, and they would only be allowed to eat one marshmallow. If the researchers were not summoned by the ringing of the bell, they would return to the room after 15 minutes. If a child rang the bell early and wanted to have a marshmallow immediately, they were more reliant on a hot system of thinking and were willing to sacrifice a bigger reward in the future, two marshmallows, for a smaller but immediately satisfying reward, one marshmallow. On the flip side, if a child waited until the end of the 15 minutes, they were more reliant on a cool system of thinking and were able to prioritize the bigger long-term reward, two marshmallows, over the smaller immediate reward, one marshmallow. In follow-up studies, Mitchell surveyed the same children from the original marshmallow experiment on how they were doing as adults. Mitchell saw that children who waited longer to receive their marshmallow treats had found greater overall success in terms of higher SAT scores, better health, and attainment of higher education. Not only that, but the parents of those children who waited longer for their marshmallows were more likely to say that their children planned well for the future and handled stress effectively. Even more recently, in 2011, psychologist BJ Casey reached out to participants of the original marshmallow test who were in their 40s at the time and asked them to be part of a similar experiment that would retest their self-control as adults. Casey's results found that generally, people who behaved impulsively and relied on their hot system of thinking as children still behaved in the same way as adults. Similarly, people who were patient and relied on their cool system of thinking as children also tended to behave the same way as adults. Please know that although this video shows marshmallows being used in Casey's adult experiment for ease of comparison, Casey actually used various different objects that would be desirable for, to adults in his experiments. Although the marshmallow test seems to imply that impulsivity is an innate ability, there are always ways to practice self-control. For example, you can set clear, attainable goals for yourself, consciously monitor and analyze your behaviors, and remove yourself from the setting of temptation. By rehearsing these methods and skills, you could potentially increase your self-control. Thus, your current state of impulsiveness or non-impulsiveness is not really a conclusive statement on your future potential. Now it's your time to think further. Would you categorize yourself as a person who uses a more hot system of thinking or someone who uses a cool one? Give examples of personal choices that you've made to support your argument.